Nice, 5'10". Right on, boys. I was not very into following the professional running world in high school. I was pretty insulated. I knew nothing of Coach Sullivan or Willis or, you know, Nate Brannon. I didn't even know of Ron Warhurst. But I quickly learned when I got here, you know, what the tradition is at Michigan. And, you know, I was kind of blown away. You know, you step on campus and then you start hearing about all these names and you look in the display case or the All-American plaques on the wall and you're like, oh my God, like... I think I might only have one um, school record. Um, which is a real honour just to get my name up on the board, considering I feel like I've had a, a pretty successful international career that, that shows how many amazing people have come um, many, many years before me and they're going to continue to come afterwards. So it's really cool to just be just one little notch on that amazing cog. Hey, we got donuts and coffee. Here we go. <laughs> have a sip of you got your coffee. You can take a break. No, no, you have one right now. Go ahead. Here, don't, don't, don't run away without get. You got to get one. <laughs> you retired in 2010. Yeah. Right? Um, talk about that decision and, and what it was like to step away from this program that you cultivated. It was time. I was been here 36 years. There's not many, not many coaches that are coaching today that have been at a place over 30 years in any sport. It's particularly. Um, you know, cross country and track, they move around. Everybody wants to be the head coach and everybody wants to get more money. Back then, we weren't that concerned about money. We were concerned about coaching. I still get my, my you know, my, my fix on coaching Nick and, and a few of the other kids that, uh, uh, that are still, you know, international runners. And I don't have to deal with all the administrative stuff and the NCA stuff and rules and regulations. So, in a sense, that's really helped me make a transition into being an older guy that still coaches and so forth. I'll probably end up, I don't know where they're going to put me, but somewhere around here when I, when I pass, <laughs> sprinkle my ashes out here. All right, here with Alex Gibby, men were 12th today. Uh, what are your thoughts? Um, you know, I think it's a pretty typical um, mid-October race. We had four very solid races. Um, I thought the guys were pretty loaded coming in. I didn't know quite if they processed it all by the time we got to the day, so, you know, I think... Well, I'm really pleased with. Uh, it was an interesting time. I mean, Michigan was not where it is now in terms of its place in the Big Ten. It was uh, kind of in a down, down time. I experienced that my first year when we were, I believe we were 21st or 22nd. Those were tough days because we had some guys with great performances, but as a team, it just never, it, it, it wasn't indicative of how good we really were. I'll credit Coach Gibby with developing me. You know, I, did not come in as a stud out of high school. Um, I was kind of a you know, developmental guy per se. Um, certainly not like a national caliber high school athlete. He taught me you know, the value of hard work and putting your nose to the grindstone and having kind of big picture mentality while working like day to day on all the little details. Everybody on the team has a tremendous amount of respect for Gibby. Um, he also was a large reason why I ended up here. Um, I got along with Gibby really well. He, I, I agreed with a lot of his philosophies and, and he, I loved his training. Everything was great about him. When Gibby left, it was pretty emotional, actually. Um, you know, a lot of the guys, including myself, were like pretty just beat up and disappointed because, you know, Gibby was a great guy. It was pretty surprising to all of us once we heard Gibby wasn't gonna be here. Um, but I think being at a collegiate athlete for a couple years and looking at like the other programs around the country, it wasn't very surprising because I think all the, all the schools I looked at, or almost all of them, had a coaching change from the time I, I was recruited to the time that our coach left, left Michigan. Mason reached out to everybody um, at the time and, and got us all back in Ann Arbor even over the summer when everyone was all over the place. I kind of had insider information about like the change. And being from Canada, Sully's basically been my idol since I started running. We're going to start from the start line. When you started running here, what made you choose the University of Michigan? You know, I, was, I had already won a national championship at, you know, at the senior level in Canada. And so I was, I was already one of the top athletes overall in, in Canada, um, you know, despite being a high school senior. And so for me, you know, I looked at, you know, what, what was going to be the next logical step to take me to the international level. And for me is I needed more depth of competition. My first national championship was really awesome in 95. I won the indoor mile. And, um, and it was special because it was, it was against one of my, one of my high school rivals um, from Canada, Graham Hood, who was um, a couple years older than me out of Burlington, Ontario. But we, we matched up all the time. I was 
was able to nip him at the line there for my first national championship. So that was a that was a big deal. And then I came back an hour later and anchored our DMR to a national championship. Um, you know, so to be able to have my own individual championship and then to share another one with you know three other teammates um, as a sophomore was was huge. You know, and I really credit the development that I that I gained in my five years at Michigan to help me be the athlete that I was beyond that. Part of what um, kind of attracted me to coaching and to especially to coaching at the NCAA level is I felt like it was a, it was a, a system that really enabled me to develop and become the athlete that I was eventually as I moved on to my international career. And so a lot of it was about being able to give back, give back to a system that, that helped me develop, helped me to be successful, help other athletes achieve those goals. There's something special about that. Personally, I didn't know Sully before then. I knew he had, um, I mean, obviously knew how good he was and stuff, but I didn't know him on any personal level. I'd never met him. Um, our Canadian Ben Flanagan was super pumped, though. I remember meeting him for the first time and just like didn't even know what to say because, like I said, I, I looked up to the guy my whole, uh, my whole career. So it was, it was pretty cool to actually meet Kevin Sullivan. You know, it's easy to kind of get a little starstruck by him because of what his credentials are, but he's just a normal guy. You know, he went through everything we're going through now. And the first practice ever was at camp. We did a 10 miler uh, when we got to camp. And I was running with the guys because um, I had gone up to camp to scout it out beforehand. So I kind of knew where some of the trails and roads and everything were. So we went out five miles and we turned around and, and, and I had to jump in the woods for a bathroom break. And I came out and they were a lot farther ahead than I anticipated they were going to be. Didn't think anything of it until a couple of days later, our trainer had come to me and said, oh yeah, when you jumped in the woods, those guys picked the pace up. <laughs> <laughs> tried to try to drop them. Yeah, I remember that. I'm sure they thought, oh yeah, he's you know, 40 years old. He's not supposed to be hanging around with us. So let's see what he's got. So he just hauled for the last like four miles and hawked us all down. Caught up behind them and just kind of tried to make it seem like I wasn't breathing very hard. Saying like, hey, I guess I still got a little bit, <laughs> which is really funny. They were completely amazed that I, <laughs> that I caught them. So. They're, they're talking about it for the next couple of days. Like, I can't believe Coach caught us. I, we thought we had him drop for sure. So that was my first practice with those guys. A nice way to kind of get ourselves connected together, I think. A couple things before we, uh, before we go out. So uh, I know guys are asking me about entries for Louisville this weekend. So they've got, um, all entries are up now. Eight teams total that are either ranked in the top 30 or they're getting votes. So there's uh, Eastern Michigan at 36, Iona's number eight, Eastern Kentucky's number 28, Louisville's number 37, Penn State's number 38, Mississippi at 13, us at number 10, Wisconsin at number four. Um, there's 28 teams total. There's Illinois there as well, so we got another Big Ten team in there as well. Uh, Grand Valley will be there, so we got another in-state team. Um, so it's it, it's going to be a, it's going to be a good quality meet for us. Um, it'd be the first kind of real test um, of the season. So I want to make sure that you know we're going in with a good mindset this week in training. So we're not we're not really coming down in training a whole lot. It'll be a little bit lower volume overall for the week, but you know I want I want to stay focused today. Um, you know we're not we're not cutting back today just because we got a race on Saturday. I think in the past we had a. Um, a strong emphasis on just improving our fitness, whereas I think under Sully we might have more of emphasis on focusing on racing. With Sully now um, at the helm, um, many of much of what he does is what I did when I was on the team. So often I'll do the exact same workout on the exact same day that we did 10 years ago. Sully didn't even realize it, but one day I saw the guys down at the track and I said, oh, what do you got today? And he said, oh, a three mile, two mile, one mile. And I said, wait a minute, it was, wasn't pre-nats last weekend? And they said, yeah. And I said, so it's Tuesday after pre -nets. We did that exact workout eight years ago. So, And I don't think Sully had been looking at his training logs because he wasn't actually there that time. That would have been, he was there a few years before me as well. So it just happened to work out that great minds think alike, Ron and then Sully. And we do lots of time runs, four, five, and six miles. We do a hill training. Uh, I don't know if you've been to the Arb here, but that's one of, the, one of our staples. And then the, uh, you know, the Michigan. Under our previous coach, we had never done a Michigan before. And uh, it was, you know, I've been so long that no one on the current team had ever done a Michigan before, even though we had heard about it. So the very first workout Sully had us do um, was, a, was a Michigan. I just used to look at races and, and, and try and figure out 
what, what do they do? They Well, they go out real hard and everybody settles in and then they somewhere along the line, somebody makes a break and everybody has to go go with, uh, with the person that makes the break. Then you find out who all the players are. Instead of 50 people, you're down to 10 and then you have to decide if you're one of the main players or when are you going to make your break, when are you going to make your run for home, you know? And anywhere can come from 600 out to 200 out. So I just, uh, that's how I developed in Michigan. I put all those elements together. I think everyone was really excited on the team when we had the Michigan for workout, kind of like intimidating, really big, really challenging workout. Ron showed up and was cheering us on. Willis was uh, running back and forth on the, like, the home stretch, just cheering guys on. So it was like starting the new era, you know, with that workout was kind of like the transition into like what the program's going to be in the future. Let's go, David, all the way All right, David. His style is awesome because he always uh, he likes mixing things up a lot. So although the the core foundation of it may be the same throughout, like for example, tempo work versus speed work, the specifics of the workouts are always changing just to kind of keep you on your toes. He makes sure to apply a lot of uh, race simulations and uh, scenarios you'd experience in a race that maybe some coaches wouldn't. Uh, put attention on and those go a long way so everything's been great um, the results have shown the first two months was really about just kind of trying to hit the ground running and keep my head above water and, and there wasn't even really a whole lot of thought about hey what can this team achieve and it wasn't until we finally got to camp that I was really kind of able to sit down and, and evaluate the team and be like and, and really think about you know what's going to be a successful season for us and I'm looking at the the roster, we had lost Mark Beams and, and uh, Morsi Ryan, who were low 29, 10K guys who had exhausted their eligibility in cross country. We lose those guys off a team that was, you know, in the, in the low 20s. A good finish might be making nationals or, you know, finishing it around the same spot. My guys had, a, had an athletes only meeting while we were at camp and, and came to me afterwards and said, hey coach, we, you know, our goal is to be, our goal is to be top 15. You step into a situation and you're not sure, you know, how guys really go about goal setting. Do they set goals that are easily attainable or do they set goals that, you know, that they know are possibly not going to happen? You know, in previous years we had, I guess you could say bombed at NCAAs. We knew we had, you know, a stronger team than the places we had finished. We had an idea of what our team was like over the summer. Based on our the results from our training, we thought that, you know, it wasn't even a lofty goal, it was a realistic thing. We knew from the start where we were really at and uh, that we had a couple uh, performances that weren't truly indicative of our talent. As soon as we said we're top 15, he says, okay, let's do it. It's like, all right, let's, br let's bring it. You know, that's the type of attitude I want to have. I want guys that want to come in and be better than what other people think they should be. It's really easy to set a goal that you know you're going to make. You know, we had ups and downs during the season, for sure. I mean, we ran great at Notre Dame. We ran, I would say, mediocre at at, uh, at Wisconsin. We had a really solid Big Ten meet. Ran poorly at regionals, and uh, but we bounced back. And um, you know, the guys stayed really resilient, and uh, and really, they all had, you know, collectively, I think the group really had one of their best races at nationals. By all means, we knew where we were at, but it, it doesn't make the task any easier. Uh, we knew that if we wanted top 15 um, or, or better, it was going to be hard. There's something about having Coach Sullivan, who we all knew had been there before. I remember him coming up to me on the line of nationals and saying, just go out there and grind. I mean, it's such a simple sport, and Coach Sullivan understands that and kind of brings, out, brings that out for us. You know, we were doubled down and make sure that, like, you know what, like, this is our moment, this is our day. Well, it's just prove what we've done all season. Like, let's get out there and let's grind. And prove that, you know, sloppy, muddy Terre Haute, like the guys from Michigan are gonna be able to run to their potential. And we're off here in the NCAA Division I Cross Country National Championships. When the gun goes off, there's no more coaching that you can, that you can really do. I mean, it's really in their hands at that point. I was really hoping for a top 10 finish. I had grown stronger and you know faster and more competent. I was gonna run with anyone. Like I didn't really feel like there was many people that, you know, could run away from me. It was mostly just down that long home stretch in Terre Haute. I was in striking position for, you know, 
top five, top six spot. I know I can run with them for 9,600 meters, but I gotta be able to close with them in the last 400. The group of guys I was with just were able to finish stronger than I was. Finished 13th, slightly disappointing. You know, muddy, sloppy day and, you know, not everybody had their best day that day, but we had seven guys who collectively, you know, put together very solid races. And um, we had our best performance at Nationals in 10 years. In a sense, it was almost a little bit of sense of relief. Like, oh, phew, you know, like everything, everything turned out, everything turned out, well, great. You know, to come away with, you know, 11th place finish was, you know, the that was the best I've ever seen at Michigan. And that was a huge step forward the program. Like, that's finally putting us in, at least near the realm of where we want to be. We uh, had our minds set on, on a top 15 spot from day one, and uh, yeah, it, it happened. <laughs> I wouldn't use the term surprise, uh, because like I said, we, we knew it was there. It was just a matter of showing it on the day. Maybe an affirmation that Sully was taking us in the right direction, too, that he knew how to you know, conduct workouts. We arrived at the postseason ready to go and ready to fire on all cylinders. That bus ride back was filled with a lot more excitement for the years ahead than, you know, had been previous years, where we're kind of trying to look for an answer. Now we're looking for, like, what's next? Exciting to finally kind of see everything coming together. Like, it's a good time to be a Wolverine. One, two, three. Go! Go! Drive down to Louisville, Kentucky. About a five hour drive here from Ann Arbor. <laughs> I'm Sawyer, cross country course. Feeling good, we've had a good week of training. Team meeting tomorrow night. Really talk about what we're gonna do tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Scott's, they going down. Badger hunting season.